Hey guys, it's Akonsi Tilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, to please do so by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more content. Today I'm pretty excited because I'm going to continue the videos on VFX Craft. I've been showing you how to use VFX Craft in previous videos. In this video, I'm basically going to give you a summary of everything that we have done. I'm also going to show you some of the examples that I created and then give you the URL for you to download these examples. So let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. Hey guys, how's it going? So let me show you what I have right now and it is the Unity VFX Essential project that I created previously. So what I'm going to be doing today is not only sharing this entire project to you and if you haven't looked at it, make sure that you go into my GitHub page, Dilmer V Unity VFX Essentials and clone it from, from there and then basically you can use it however you like to use it, it's completely free. And then if you don't remember this, I'm going to put it in the description of this video so you can download it from there as well. So what I'm going to be doing is going through all the examples and we're going to be looking at you know what the game objects are, what components I have and then so on and, and it's more of a you know look and see how the effects look and then some of the ideas that I had by building by building some of these effects and I'm gonna be adding a lot more I, I think I, I think at this point it's it's getting to to the point where unity is adding so many features that I am running behind and I want to give you more videos that are related to VFX so this one is the space scene and I have in this scene I have four different components I have the stars which is what you see you know kind of going in the opposite direction of the z axis and then i also have three different comets each of them have their own vfx graph and if i go and look at the stars you can see that i have the star graph if i double click it it'll open the graph i'm not going to go too much into this because i already covered some of these in the previous videos i just want to show you that this is working on 2018.2.0 f1 which is one of the latest versions of unity as of today, which is September 15, 2019. So if you haven't watched the previous videos, make sure that you watch those because I go through in detail on, on how to do all these effects. So this one has that and it also has a comment. So if I go into the inspector, double click on the comment, it's going to open the the comment the comment graph, which you can see here as well. And you can, you know, by, by looking at some of the gradients and some of the components. You can probably tell that this is the one that I'm using for it. So this one looks really cool. I, I really enjoy the results. I also have a gradient, as you can see, that goes from kind of like a bright white color, and then it starts going down to more of a red, and then I have a little bit of a black, which I have in the in the gradient color. And you can see it by looking at, you know, what I'm starting with. I'm starting with you know a white color and then going into black and then going into red and then it goes into transparency so that's how those ones work the the star the look and feel of the stars was just you know experimentation if i go and look at that one as well we can look and see i'm not going to go into too much detail but we can see you know from from the coloring you can see that i'm also using the gradient i think the gradient is one of those components that really makes the scene stand out and you can see how I have a little yellow and also white and then I go into transparency at the very end. So this thing looks really cool. You can go into the game view and then look and see how it looks. And then the other thing that I want to show you is, so this is the space scene. Let me show you, I have many of them and I'm going to try to cover them all. So let me just double click on the portals and then go back into the scene. And then I'm just going to, let me make sure, there we go. <laughs> I know it looks it looks impressive and, and it is really impressive. I think Unity has done an amazing job at you know providing these functionalities to creators and, and developers and you know designers. I think there's just so much that you can do with, with effects like this. And this one right here, it's interesting because I wanted to see how I could control particles by having a game object that will also control the direction of the particles. So if I go into the game view, you can see how, how that looks, but it's, there's also a sphere behind the scenes here. And the reason why I have the sphere is because the, the portal particles are attracting to the direction of the sphere. So if I were to change the position, you're gonna see a big change there. And you can see how I'm going forward. And then now particles are kind of attracting to, 
the the sphere if i go into the middle they're like it looks like they're colliding so there's a lot of things that you can do with effects like these you know you can kind of you can probably create a superpower or a cannon type effect or even a portal that looks like this and when somebody gets into the portal or a character is walking into the portal you can create an effect like that just pretending that this was a character controller and you were working towards it so so this one is is that is the portal let me show you so that's the portal with direction it's also available in github i, I guess every single one of these is available in github so let me show you i'm not going to change i'm not going to save the changes because i want the sphere to be behind now let me show you this one this one is one that i showed you previously and you've probably seen it in twitter because i've been posting about it and this is one of my most favorites especially the one on the middle which is kind of a a version of the portal with direction that I just show you and this one I have three different portals they're just different variations different colors in fact if you go to each one of these objects each of them is named each visual effects is named as the game object so if I go to portal underscore one you're gonna see that that one has you know you can see the gradient here and you know that resembles that one in the middle if I go to portal two you're gonna see that also that one resembles the one that is selected. So those are just different variations of the look that I can give the scene. In fact, if I wanted just to create a new one, it could be as easy as, you know, let's say that I wanted to create a new one and I could clone that one. And maybe we put that one on the very top here. I'm gonna show you how easy it is if I wanted to add a new variation of it. And then what I'm gonna do is this one is going to be, let's say that I wanna name this one four. And then we can just make sure that I position everything correctly. And let's just rotate it a little bit. And then maybe tilt it forward. And okay. So let's say that we wanted to create a variation of that. I'm gonna move this one up. And then what I'll do, this should be as easy as just cloning one of the versions that I have. And then making a portal underscore four. And looks like I already had an underscore four for some reason. I just probably wasn't using it, but that's okay. We can use five, it's fine. And then four is probably used for another version that I have somewhere. So I'm just gonna name this one five. I think four is used for the other session, other scene that I just show you. So on this one, I'm just gonna use five and then we go to the inspector and then I could either drag it and drop it or I could just search for five here. And then you can see that that attaches. This is gonna recompile that effect. And then it could be as easy as if I wanted to make some, some changes, some tweaks, I could go here and say, okay, I wanna Say that I wanted to change this to be, I wanted to be different than the than the other ones. Let me go back to that. And maybe on this one we start with, let me try a different color. Let's do, this one is a little bit more, let's do blue. And then I'm just gonna play around and see what comes out of it. We can do more blue. And then maybe on this one, you can see how that is changing. We're starting to see a lot of differences. And then on this one, we can probably just do it and see how that changes. I'm just gonna do, and this is basically what I normally do when I'm when I'm working with these and just basically playing around with different options and then see what comes out of them. And we can probably just do, can probably just do a black. And let's see, let's do a different color here. Let's do a dark color there. Or if you just want it to be, you know, simple, you can also remove a lot of these pings and look that that's just way too strong. We can just do kind of a, I think a Y looks cool. Let's do something like that there. And then this one, you gotta be careful with some of the colors, especially in this scene, because I have bloom enabled. So bloom is, is affecting a lot of the particles. And what if we do, I think something like that works. And then on the red color, I can probably, let me see what I can find. Yellow, I think I think that looks cool. Let me go back to this one, change it a tiny bit more. I don't want it to come out that much. I think something like that works. And I think something like that works. If we go into the game view, you can see now we have, we not much changes. We now have something that looks, you know, different, and you can basically make it work with, you know, the style that you're that you're looking for. 
So that's this one, and I think, let me see if I'm gonna keep that one or not. Let me add one more change to that. And in fact, I'm going to, let's leave that one. You can see how, how that changes it. Okay, let me go back. Let's just leave it like that, and then I think, I think that looks different enough. So now the next thing that I'm gonna show you is, let me show you another scene. This one was the portals. So I'm just gonna show you meteors. This is another version of the space one that I showed you just recently. This one also looks really cool. I just tried to make it more, you know, fire-like. And if we go to the game view, you can see that now the stars are moving in the upward direction. And then the reason why I did that is because I wanted to give it a look and feel of motion. And then the rockets are basically making it look like they're they're going down in a, at a fast speed. I also have this one's name. You can go into each one of them. And then this one was cool because I was actually, I exported some of the parameters. If I go into the portal here, actually the meteor, and then we double click on the meteor. I started exposing properties on the graph so that I could change it to the inspector. And you can see that those, these are the ones that are exposed. You have this bound where you can tell it, okay, I want to expose this property. And then you basically need to map it. I also have that discussed in one of the previous videos. So that's how you can change some of these ones if I wanted to. I'm not gonna change them because I wanna leave them as they are. But this is another scene. Let me go back into here and let's look at fire. So another another ex example of using particles. I do like the pixelated look and feel of, of these scenes and of the particles. So that's why I decided to do this one that way, that way as well. And you can see how I have also gradients apply. If we go to the cube cut, this one is also really cool because it allows me to change, to, to basically cut particles. And let me show you how this one works. I'm just gonna go into inspector here, double click it. And I could probably just move the inspector down and I wouldn't have to toggle between, but I think it's fine. I'm already too far from this, from this example to change it. And if we go here, we can look in that I have a collider. And if you look at this collider and I were to change the collider, I could change the radius. Let me see if I can make some changes to it. And I'm just gonna move this one around. And there we go. So basically this collider allows me to, to collide the particles that are on the top. Just trying to find out why I can't now change them. And if I can, you can see how that is changing. And it used to be that there used to there used to be options, and for some reason the options are not showing. There's normally a, a gizmo that allows you to modify this. Let me see if I can make it work by targeting the game object. And okay, so I already have it attached. Select, let me just move it aside. There we go. So just make sure that you have it as a target game object, because then it'll allow you to change it. So I can go in and do this. I can also move it up and down. I can also change the width, the height. And then if I wanted to change the width, I could change the width. So that's how you can control those. Just make sure that you do target game object. Otherwise you won't be able to see some of the gizmos. All right, so that's how that one works. Let me go into the other one. So this one's cube cut. And then the basic one, the basic one was the first one that I worked on when I was working on learning a VFX graph. And this is one of the systems that are kind of pretty fine. I just tweaked it a little bit. And let me see if we can get it to compile. There we go. And you can probably, you've probably seen that before. And it's one of the ones that Unity provided as part of a systems. If you want to build something like that, you can go into right click on the graph and basically create a new node, go into the system, and then just you know try to experiment with some of these. This one is going to be the simple swarm particle system. It's going to give you something like that, not quite similar, but you can get to it by just making a few changes. So that's everything that I wanted to show you today, guys. These are just different examples. And again, this is available via GitHub and you can download it for free. Thank you, guys. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about what I just showed you, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out GameDev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers. And also find me in Patreon.com where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code. Thank you very much, guys.